You know, Mike, Mike is a, a terrific kid, and uh, but yeah, he's been you know he's been injured an awful lot, and um, you know we just just you know with the way that everything is now, um, you know we just got to kind of get some. We were fortunate to get a couple corners last year in the draft. Um, you know, we signed uh, Patrick Peterson in free agency, so I think that gave us the opportunity to make the trade. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's Mike Zimmer talking about the trade of former first-round pick Mike Hughes that saved the Vikings a little over $1.8 million in cap space for 2021, which we're going to get into here on today's episode of Purple Daily. Mackie, Judd, Declan Goff, our executive producer, and this show is presented by TCL. Enjoy more of what you love with TCL. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who thought... Oh, maybe these guys are probably gonna probably gonna take a break, right? The draft's over, the season's been over for months, and the the schedule release came out. You know, when are these guys gonna? Maybe these guys are gonna hibernate for a while and come back <laughs> for training camp. Oh no, this is a daily show. Uh, we'll make up. Last night we were gonna do a special edition of Ventline with a special guest, rescheduled to tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, just so people know. But what's going on with you guys? You guys ready to talk about? how the Vikings should spend their massive amount of remaining cap space cash? Why would we take a break? No. I mean, OTAs, workouts, <laughs> mini camps. That's right. Like, there's no there's no rest here. You want to win a, a Lombardi? You don't rest right now. No. This is, this, is when, this is when the real talking heads make their headway here, right? This is when we make our keep, right? We entertain you through the doldrums exactly. of the offseason. Exactly. And uh, also on Thursdays, we're going to bring back Minnesota Sports Rewind, but in Purple Rewind fashion, looking back at some of the big, key, pivotal moments in Viking history. But boys, with the trade of Mike Hughes, the Vikings saved a little over $1.8 in cap savings for 2021, according to USAToday.com. Um, and they incurred a dead hit of $1.3 million. This leaves the Vikings with a little over $9.4 in cap savings at the moment, so they're nine point four million below the cap. They're going to need to spend six to seven million on draft picks, mostly uh, Christian Darrisaw. He's Christian Darrisaw is going to count for sure in the top fifty. Uh, yeah, and he's 50 done or already. Or Fifty one or whatever it is. Yeah, and he's, he's done. Yeah, and maybe Kellen Mond at like nine hundred thousand. So they, so they'll have to figure that out. But also, the Vikings used a post June first designation for Kyle Rudolph's release. And that's seven point nine million dollars in cap savings. So, according to USA Today, we're talking about like fourteen million dollars in cap space here in the next couple of weeks. So, every Monday, we're going to bring you a pecking order, and today it's Judd Zolgad's pecking order of the best ways the Vikings can spend their money. Okay, so five things, and to be clear, all of these are not achievable. So it's a case by case. And like if you if, if a domino falls, then another domino can't fall. Okay. So, so you I'm can't not saying do, you can't do all of these. You're not gonna have the cap space to do all five of the, these things, but I think they're all important considerations and they're all areas of need, or at least in Judd Zolgat's opinion, potential need. <clears throat> Number one. You just talked uh you just in the third person yourself in the third person. In the third there. person. Okay. I went I I went uh Bo Jackson, Herschel Walker. That's good. All right, number one, sign a veteran cornerback. And I've got one for, for you. I've gotten questions on Twitter in the last couple of weeks about Richard Sherman, who I do think they poked around on before they signed Peterson. But Sherman is still on sign because I think he wants a decent payday. I don't know he's going to get it, but he's also going to want playing time. And I don't know that that's available here. So I don't think that that is an option. I think when Peterson signed... That took a, a potential signing of a guy like Sherman off the board as far as the Vikings are concerned. But I've got a name here for you, gentlemen. Brian Poole. He's 28, played in only nine games last season with the Jets. He played two years with the Jets. And before the 2020 season, he had never missed more than two games in four years. The first three with the Falcons and then his first one with the Jets. So he's reliable. He's certainly not a star player. But he's the type of veteran depth that I think you absolutely have to have because it's pretty clear right now. Your starters are Peterson, Dantzler. Alexander, in my opinion, is the third guy in the nickel, which is akin to starting. 
Gladney, because of his off-the-field stuff, we still don't know if he's going to be suspended or or eligible to play. Uh, you do have some options on the depth chart. I don't know that they're great, guys like Chris Boyd. Mm-hmm. But with Hughes being gone, I think you definitely need a veteran guy because somebody, Dantzler perhaps, is going to get hurt. Brian Poole, I think, makes the most sense. He, he could play as much or as little possibly as you want. And I think the payday would fit in to this cap equation. So Brian Poole, and I'm not going to pretend to have dissected Brian Poole film or have watched him play with a sharp scouting eye, but he was an undrafted rookie free agent in 2016 out of Florida, and he signed with the Atlanta Falcons and wound up playing a thousand. Actually, it might have been 2015. No, it was 16. He played a thousand snaps as a as a as an undrafted rookie, I believe in 2016 and uh, and had a had an above average PFF grade at his position too. He's become more of a slot cornerback the last couple of years with the Jets, only played about 500 snaps last year, but the best way I can describe him just in terms of like PFF profile and reading up on him is he's a pro, like he's a credible professional cornerback that would be in your rotation and could and could definitely fill in uh, as needed in the slot. I think Mackenzie Alexander would still be on track to start in the slot. But yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't be relying on like unproven rookie second year guys that Mike Zimmer doesn't trust. You'd have a professional dude with three thousand eight hundred career NFL snaps under his belt. So exactly, and it, like there's it. a big difference in my mind between veteran corners who are out there right now who have not found a fit, and oh my God, Dantzler's hurt. It's week three. Let's go look on the street for yeah. a vet. That's how you get a corner who misses a simple tackle. Well, I will say that the biggest knock on Brian Poole is the tackle rate. He, uh, especially his first three years, he was missing on average 15% of tackles, which is not okay. good. So, so missed tackles are definitely a thing with him that he's shored up a little bit the last couple of years. So something to keep. But he might not embarrass you. No, that's right. I, idea two. <laughs> and this actually, this actually probably has a pretty good chance of happening. My guess is it would be July, and it might be right before or around the time the training camp starts. Sign Daniil Hunter to an extension that then, but but then pushes the majority of his money into future seasons when you won't have Kirk's contract to be concerned about. But give him, if, if you're convinced that the neck is fine, give him the new contract now to keep the peace. And this is a guy who, if he comes back and and is fine, and it does concern me that it's a neck problem, Phil Mackey. This is a guy who you definitely want to be happy. He's a star player. When healthy, he's one of the best to do it at his position, and that's hard to find. So I think that there is a good chance that you would give him a contract that would would start a new or at least acknowledge 2021 and then would get into probably – the most, the biggest part of the payday once Kirk is gone after a couple of years at the most. A couple ways to look at that. I, I like this one, and I think at some point, I don't know that he reports on his current contract. I think he might play hardball, and I think based on how he sort of backed off of the rhetoric that was being put out there, I mean, there was some tension there that was boiling over publicly a couple months back, and it seems like somebody with the Vikings got to him and said, dude, we have a million things going on right now. We're trying to prepare for the draft. We're in free agency. We're trying to make this offensive line better. We're trying to make the defense better around you. We hear you. We'll talk contract at some point. Well, now that we're clear of all these offseason things in the draft, like this is the time where you would sit down with Daniil Hunter's representatives and try and make it right. Um, so I think there's a couple ways to look at it. Because you've got all this cap space still for 2021, and there's more risk in signing him to a contract extension because his, you, know, you don't know how long he's going to be healthy with that neck. You could front load some of it. Like you could take his I don't have his cap hit in front of me. I think it's like 17 million for this year. Mm-hmm. You could make his cap hit 25 million this year and be fine. And just and and then you could spread, you know, money however you wanted in future years. And obviously if Kirk comes off the books, it makes that contract easier to swallow with mm-hmm. Daniel Hunter. But you've got some options and some leeway because you've got some cap flexibility right now for a Daniel Hunter contract extension. So I like that one. And I, I think as far as probability goes, my first two are definitely ex- being examined, and one of the two happens. I've got to think that they are going to go get a corner. Like, that's yeah, I, and, and the, the, the and, one thing. They, they've got to, because Hughes is gone, and Gladney, you don't know. Yeah, PFF, 
uh, projects him, Brian Poole, that is, the cornerback, one year, $2 million. So okay, that's you, fine. Could, you could make that happen. Do both of those things, then. And still restructure sure. Daniel Hunter's contract. <laughs> Number three on the potential, what I would do with the Vikings salary cap room that is left, is this one. And Zim, I'm guessing his politics for this to happen. Sign 33-year-old defensive tackle Geno Atkins as a pass rush specialist. So so you, you've got your two starters in the middle of the defensive line. But what yeah. you don't really have is a is a true three-technique third-down guy that, that can get after the quarterback. Um, Atkins had 10 sacks as recently as 2018 and played the three-tech for Zim with the Bengals when Mike was there as the defensive coordinator. So, yes, he is an older player, but I think if you got him a set amount of snaps, so he's not a three-down player, and he's coming in on third down to probably replace Tomlinson, that Geno Atkins at this point, who is still out there, so he's clearly not going to get paid a ton, becomes an option as your your pass rush specialist um, in the interior of the line, where as far as I can tell, you definitely probably need somebody. So I, I I love this idea. I will say that when when you say hey he had double digit sacks as recently as 2018 or 17, I mean that's for a guy that's 33, 2018 is a lifetime ago. You know, there's a big difference between at that size too being 29 or 30 versus being 33. Mm-hmm. Uh, he dropped off the planet last year, and now. If you if if you ignore last year, which is tough because it could just be the cliff. I think last his role went, cliff. and I think his role went down as well it did. there. Yep, he only played 119 snaps last year. Yeah, in the year before that, so 2019, he played a full season, 800 snaps. Uh, the pressure rate was not what it had been when he was at his peak. That's actually that's actually Rick Spielman's plane right now. I was going to say, flying out to you Cincinnati. might want to evacuate your place. <laughs> you might, you might want to get out. That thing's getting closer. Get Wait, below your desk. That's the Miguel Sano home run ball from Saturday. Look out! Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> um, I guess I'll just say that if Gina Watkins still has some gas left in the tank, I love the idea. Listen, dude, you're not going to play every snap. We're going to keep you yep. fresh, and we need, we need, we need you. You know, twenty snaps a game to get after the quarterback up the middle, make something happen. I'd be all for that. I'd be all for that. The key there, clearly, one thing, the contract, right? Yeah. Like short-term, one year, X amount, you know, it's not going to cost that that much. This plane, like, is this plane, like, just, like, circling your place right now? Uh, apparently, yeah. Apparently, there's just there's just police planes flying over. Maybe it's the hot take police. They're flying right. in to try and... Oh, they saw your Sano tweet, and they took it seriously. <laughs> That's what it was. All right, um, number four on my to-do list for the potential moves that the Vikings can make with their salary cap. Sign 27-year-old wide receiver D.D. Westbrook or 37-year-old wide receiver Larry Fitzgerald as your third guy. In either case, and I don't like this, but it's just true, in either case, the Vikings use... Thielen and Jefferson a ton, and the third guy, for as much as we, we talk about, well, B.C. Johnson's good, he's going to break out. No, he won't because he he won't be allowed to, which intrigues me if Fitzy liked the role, just sort of the, you know, swan song, go around the league, year 37, your last year, going back to the place where you, you learned from Chris Carter as a ball boy, your dad's here. Um, I think it could be a fit if he was willing to accept that role, because he would play, he wouldn't play a ton. And I know that the room seems pretty good, but it does intrigue me to have a guy who's been around as long and is as good a teammate as Fitz is. Um, it would obviously have to be much like the Atkins discussion on the exact right contract for the team. Mm-hmm. But that but that is a viable option that would then take Declan's guy, Chad Beebe, and put him in a role that even Declan might approve of, nice. which would be more just special teams ace, and he would rarely see the field. I mean, my heart says I would love Larry Fitzgerald. My head says he's cooked. Last year, as a 37-year-old, right, he caught 54 passes, which, okay, it's pretty good. 54 passes, right? Yep. An average of seven yards per reception, which is yeah. god-awful. 
and, uh, and and a long of 18. So he caught 54 passes and not once had 20 or more yards on a reception. I mean, there's dudes in the league that are averaging 18 yards per reception. And so there, I mean, it's it's all going to be underneath possession stuff with no yards yeah. after the catch. So I don't know. I'm my, Again, my heart is like, oh, it would be so much fun to see that guy in purple as a third wide receiver and a leader in the locker room. But my head says he can't create separation. You can't use him down the field. And he would just be there like very situationally for you. But the third guy runner. was Tajay Sharp last year, and he barely played because he was so bad. Like, like if, if this was a position that the Vikings used and took seriously, I would say, you know what, that's exactly right. But they don't. Like, this is just a guy that comes in and catches some passes sometimes. Now, if that changes, which, by the way, it should change. Like, personally, I would change that. But where Fitz, fit, where Fitz is a fit, no pun intended, to me, is that he would come in and provide stability. And you know what? If he's a possession guy, that's fine. Okay, would you guys rather have... Doesn't bother me. If it was one or the other, like borderline washed-up veteran, would you rather have Geno Atkins or Larry Fitzgerald? And if you choose Geno Atkins, Declan, it means Chad Beebe makes the team and gets run. Hmm. Uh, Dex? I think Atkins makes a bigger impact for the Vikings than what Fitz does as a wide receiver three. It, at least just on the field contributions, I think Atkins still has more in the tank and you can use him situationally. And yes, that would mean that Chad so you're Beebe gets Chad the Beebe. run. You're defending Chad Like You are saving yeah. his roster position for yeah. sure if you do this. Yes, I am aware of that. I'm aware of the, 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 the poison I'm taking right now as I try to make a point. But yes, I think I think Geno Atkins <laughs> brings, more to the, right. brings more to the table than Fitz does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would, I would choose Geno Atkins as well. I don't, I'd like to know like the weird gun to the head life scenario where that's like someone's making you choose those things. <laughs> but Football. let's get to the fifth one here: spending right. other people's money in cap space. Yes, I love it. the fifth one is going to, I think, slightly surprise both of you, and it comes out of left field a little bit. But if the Vikings are going to be as good as we expect, no hell, forget expect, demand. If the Vikings are going to be as good, no excuses, 2021, right? Raise your expectations, Raise, no excuses. Exactly right. If this team is going to do what we demand, then tough decisions at times are going to have to be made. And they're going to be decisions that might surprise, but this is how you win a Lombardi trophy. And it, the fifth one is this. Make a decision during off-season workouts on if Kellen Mond is ready for the role as the backup quarterback to Kirk Cousins. And if he's not, you need a veteran backup. So if you decide, you know what, this kid is just raw, which they might, I have no idea. But but I love the thinking on the Mond pick and if he's prepared to take the backup role. But simple math says at some point in time here, very soon, Kirk is going to get hurt. Like, I appreciate his toughness. He, he is an... Iron Man for a starting quarterback, and that's all great. But these guys get hurt. Like, you can't be like, well, he's an Iron Man. It's not a concern. Um, and if you see Mon play, and you're like, you know what? Bright future. Not ready to play in a game right now. With where my expectation is for your team, you can't just say, and then if Kirk gets hurt, ah, it's fine. No. There's an expectation here of greatness for 2021. The pressure's on you. And if that's the case, you can't have... You can't, you had to learn, Spielman especially, but Mike as well, from the year that you assumed Teddy's our guy, Teddy's going to be fine, and his leg snaps, and Sean Hill is your backup. Like, you can't have a backup that you can't, that you don't feel can play. But who's even available anymore? I mean, Blake Bortles just signed with your rival, the Packers. Like, who, listen, I don't dispute the odds that at some point you're not going to play all 16, 17 games if you're Kirk, like, I agree with that. I don't care. I don't care. What I don't want you to do is twofold. One, I and the most important thing is is this. I don't want you to be forced to play Kellen Mond when Kellen Mond shouldn't play and ruin him right now. There's a and lot of fair. tentacles okay. to to this. So it, it's not. I'm not saying go out and sign um, Terry Bradshaw. I'm not saying you got to go go out and sign Troy old. Aikman. I'm not saying Lenny Dawson has to come back. Troy what Aikman I, looks great physically, but he's. Yeah, he's in really good shape. His brains are mashed potatoes. But because of what the expectations are and because you, the Kellen Mond thing, you need to give every chance to work. If you get done with the offseason program, Phil, and you say, you know what? He's not there yet. He's just not there yet. Doesn't mean he, he won't be. I can't have you in week four saying, oh, my God, he just has to play. 
Well, you're lucky. You're in business so have here. A plan. Have a plan. I have a list from NFLTradeRumors.com <laughs> of available free agent quarterbacks. See, this is where the show works. Okay. This is great show, great chemistry right here. This is it right here. All right. Double play combination. And, and this list really acts as insurance for your starting quarterback. And at Federated, they act as insurance for your company. Based in Minnesota, Owatonna to be specific, Federated is one of us. They've been around for over 100 years, giving business owners peace of mind and risk management resources. You can find out more about all the industries Federated protects at federatedinsurance.com. How can they be your backup quarterback? All right. I mean, they're better than Sean Mannion. All due respect. Okay. They're good in the room. They're good on the field. Federated, Federated yes, Insurance.com. Yes. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. All right. I'm just gonna give you I'm just gonna give you guys some names. Okay. Stop me if there's some intrigue. Backup quarterback options. Brett Hundley is available. Go through uh, go through them because I think we're go, we're going to roll our eyes until we realize you probably hit on a name we shouldn't have rolled our eyes at. So okay. Brett Hundley. There's okay. definitely a name on here that Vikings fans will be very excited about. Uh, All right. K- Kurt Bankert was was a backup in Atlanta. I, I, I don't know who that is. Matt <laughs> Barkley. <laughs> Kirk who? Kurt who? Kurt Bankert. I've never heard of that man in my life. Declan, have you? If you said he worked here at Hubbard Broadcasting, I'd believe you. Yeah, so so I, would I, I. Don't, I don't even know who that is. I'd be like, I pass him every day, I'm yeah. sure. And okay. don't say hi to him. Kurt Bankert. Okay. Is <laughs> never heard you know, of the, Kurt actually Bankert. the Packers might have brought him in. The Packers okay. might have brought him in. Yeah, I don't think he's played in the game. He went to Virginia and he's like 25 years old. So I don't know. But he's on this list. Okay. So, all, all right. RG3. And some of these guys, poss- this is from two days ago. It's possible some of these guys may have signed. But RG3, Matt Barkley. Tyler Bray, Kevin Hogan, Jeff Driscoll, uh, is it Jordan Ta'amu, Matt sure. Moore, Matt Moore. <laughs> Matt Moore's out there? I Vikings think he's killer. out there. I thought he retired yeah. to go coach high school football. Kyle right. Sloter. No. Yeah, I'm not. that's on principle. What do you mean? Vikings fans love him. He's the best preseason quarterback in the NFL. And the old man would be calling me constantly to ask, when's my Kyle going to play? No. He's never my gotten Kyle. a fair shot. He's, he's a gamer. Man, okay, man. so he's bad at practice, and he's, you know, he's, I don't know. But put him in a game. I, Maybe he's I liked Brett him Farby. personally. Give him a chance, man. He's only he had a nice long talk one time. Uh, Jake Ruddick, Sean Mannion, Brian Hoyer is available. Okay. Jacob... Dola Gala, <laughs> Jacob not gonna not gonna be a quarterback going. anymore. Apparently, he I, I've was never with the I, Patriots at some. This point. is uh, I've never heard of this guy either. Well, you've Jacob, you've hit like three or four names. Zero idea with there. I've never heard of him. Okay, Jacob Dola Gala. I've never heard of him. He played at Central Connecticut. So Central Connecticut guy there. It looks like he had a Bengals helmet on at one point. I'm not really sure what that guy's deal is. Uh, yep. Nick Mullins, Drew Stanton. Hold Round on, out this Mullins. list. Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins and Drew Stanton. Okay, of, of that list, who are you bringing in? This is this is your this is where, this is where my point comes to fruition. Okay, there is nobody on this list that wins you a game if Kirk Cousins gets hurt. Right, you, but like, I don't want. Like, you could put anyone back there to hand off to Dalvin Cook. Right, but I don't want. But here's the the most important thing. It, it's twofold. I don't want to take any chances of ruining Kellen Mond. If he's not prepared to play and I have to play him, that's a problem. Yeah. Because you can I, ruin a kid. Yeah, I'm good with so that. that. So I'm I'm bigger I'm bigger on one I just don't I don't think it's fair to play a quarterback that you are trying to develop and just say, Okay, kid, you're in the fire right now. Unless you but if you've decided he's going to be okay, that's fine. Okay, so but here's I, just, I don't question. want that. You know, it, like yeah. all these dudes are scrubs. They don't know your playbook. I mean, there might be a couple guys in here that are that have worked in similar systems, but you're just you'd be just be bringing in a random guy, right? Yes. Well, you've had, and I'm not talking about starting options here, but Jake Browning and Nate Stanley have been in your system at your practices, you hate and they've Nate been Stanley. they've been on your practice squad. I don't want those guys as starting quarterbacks, but as guys that could hold a clipboard and then get into maybe Kirk misses a month or something, and you can throw one of those guys to the wolves. I'd rather put one of those guys in than waste, you know, a million dollars in cap space on Matt Barkley. 
My Jake Browning's cents. been on your practice squad for two years. I, I would take that, that chance. Nate Stanley, yeah. I wouldn't probably. Uh, Browning, and the one guy off this list that I might consider is Nick Mullins. I might consider him. What is the, like, with Jake Browning, for instance, what's the, because they drafted him, what? So he Was he drafted seventh round or was he undrafted? Rookie free agent. Undrafted. Okay. undrafted free agent. But Very what's expensive. the point in having him on your practice squad and in your meeting rooms and at your practices for two years yeah. If you're not ready for him to like hold a clipboard in prime time, you know? What's well, the... by year three, there's not. Yeah. So no, there, he becomes your backup quarterback, and, and and then Kellen Mond can either be your third string quarterback, or maybe he's your backup and Jake Browning is. Your I just gave this a lot of thought as far as, as a consideration that I don't want to take a chance. And I just, I we have to prepare for a year where Kirk gets hurt. Like, we just have to. That's my favorite part about Judd is, like, he's always – Kirk Cousins has never missed a game, basically, in his life. And and here's Judd just worrying about something that's never happened before. But that's what I, that's Boy, what makes that mountain, great executives. That mountain that's explodes what make, every 600,000 years. We're due for it to be a volcano again. All, like. California. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Earthquake, the big one. No, that's the, that's what, what makes great executives is is the ability to look and say what will go wrong. Like how many, we all know, but, but best many, case. There's not even 32 viable starting quarterbacks in the NFL. I just no, think I know. You're screwed I know, but either way, you're screwed. Well, you are. Way. You are, but I don't want to screw Mod, <clears throat> so to speak. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to goof up Kellen Mond. I don't want to have a ponder where I put him in. I, Christian Ponder stunk, but I will give him, him this. He was put in way before he was probably prepared to play. And that started the ball of, oh, my God, his confidence is now shot. He doesn't know what he's doing. Sure. And they forced it. I don't want to force this because I do think this kid has a chance to be a very good QB um, and potentially to to be Kirk's successor. And I don't want it to be where he plays in week four of 2021 and it starts this vicious cycle where he's just completely lost, confidence is destroyed, and, and now I either have to rebuild that or, worst case, I've just screwed him up. And now I got to look elsewhere because he's not going to be the answer. Your point is well taken, and we're glad you clarified that Kellen Mond statement. Just want didn't want there to be Thank any you. confusion. I there. realized not that there's hung anything there. wrong with there that. Was but, a, you know. There was a there was a silence there, and as there was a silence, that statement hung in the air, and I realized that it could be interpreted wrong, <laughs> and so I just wanted to be very clear about what I meant. Yep. So uh, there it is. That's Judd's five things the Declan, Vikings can do smirking. with their cap Bye. space. I didn't say anything when you said it because I because I would be the one to take the bite, take the bait and 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 make it more. It wasn't the bait though. It was inappropriate, and I'd yeah, like to apologize. I'd like to apologize it. to everyone for my negativity today as well. Yeah. I love everybody. The Vikings are going to be great. We'll celebrate he, each win and not worry about. He didn't bait it. you, but Judd is a master. I'm not going to finish that sentence. Oh my god. No. <laughs> right, you know what he said about great executives like ending things and like avoiding situations? I think this might be the time we just thank you. I'll right. use my executive powers. Thank here you, GM. Say, that's a wrap this. on Purple That's the Daily Empress Day. Anne signing off. Daily Deck Vikings off. Entertainment. And uh, we thank you guys for helping us get to a, a combined 20,000 subscribers across the Purple Daily and Score North YouTube channels. Whether you watch us on YouTube or whether you listen to us via podcast. Every single day, we appreciate it. And uh, don't forget, if you're a Wild fan, daily Wild playoff entertainment, breakdowns, you name it here, as long as they want to continue playing hockey over on Mackie and Judd. We'll see you guys tomorrow on Purple Daily.